and have the look for your game. I mean, I've been talking a lot about PR marketing, but have a look. Uh, everyone remembers Borderlands. Borderlands was just this other game before suddenly the art department got some kind of freedom and decided to do something completely different and suddenly it came upon everyone's radar. And my, you know, uh, another example of mine, Steve Gibson, uh, VP of Marketing at Gearbox, he said in an interview to me, um, you know, one of the hardest parts of the job when trying to get people to look at your game is having something interesting to look at. And you know, just the fact that they changed their art dramatically uh, made his job a lot easier and will make your job a lot easier too. So make it special, make it yours. Don't think that you can reinvent platformers just yet. Just try to make it so that it reflects upon your, 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 your personality and your message. And maybe people won't even realize it's a platformer anymore if you do so. You know, make it personal, make it easy to describe, and incredibly easy to love by people. And make it pop. Make it pop. Find your champions. This is one of the most important ones. I've been talking about it actually since the start of this talk. Uh, you got to militarize your fan base, like uh, Kieran Gillen, uh, former game journalist, now um, writer for comic books, um, said in one of his articles that I read early on. Um, funnel them out. You have this funnel represents a lot of things. It represents, you know, your marketing, because all these people are not going to buy your game. The ones who are funneled out, the loyalists, the advocates, the customers, the prospects, those guys might buy your game. But you can use this for champions as well. You have your advocates, the people who stand by your side, the veterans from the game industry that like your concept and believe in you, maybe have invested in you. And those guys are going to push you to finish your game and get it out there and make it successful, make it big. Um, you also have your loyalists and all these other layers. But you've got to cherish these people. You've got to stay in touch with them. You've got to ask them for advice and not think that you can do this on your own. You can, you can do this but you will not get noticed. You will not get support. And pick the right people. Pick the right ones. You will need advisors about on your game. You know, like Andy Schatz, Monaco, you know, he won the IGF award for Monaco a year ago. Um, he says there's two types of people you should have to play your games. Uh, first, your advisors, your close friends. You know, he had Dan Paladin from the Behemoth, the guys who did, um, why am I forgetting games' names now? Who knows what game Not Behemoth is? Castle Crashes, there you go. Castle Crashes sold over what, one million? I don't know, it's one of the most popular games in XBLA right now. Um, but you know, his feedback helped Andy Schatz a lot. You know, um, he kept the game from being more cerebral, which is what I tend to do, and I made it more arcade and snappier, and that actually worked. Listen to the rest, listen to the other ones. You need supporters too. But um, they might not know anything about games, but that's actually a good thing because you can test your games and see how how they respond. Um, you know, and have people play your game from like day two. Have them have them test it. Have them respond to it. Have girls play it. If you've never let a girl play your game, please do because they're half of your demographic. Ask your champions everything, but ask them three simple questions to keep it simple. Andy Schatz, uh, taught, uh, you know, taught me this in one of his talks at the GDC. Is what do you like? What do you not like? And what confuses you? Simple as that. And write down those uh, questions. Uh, write down those answers. Put them together and look at what your people are saying. The more people you have, the better. But marketing for a big part is doing your research. And show your face. Please show your face. An indie, as an indie, if you decide to become an independent developer, you are half the story. Like I said before, you are what makes your game interesting. The fact that you made this awesome, amazing game on your own, or maybe in a group of two or three, that is an angle. <coughs> Think about it. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow when I just explain how game journalism works. Please attend if you want to know more about this. Um, just a little test. So this is a picture I, I, I made, at, or it was made, at the GDC a year ago. A lot of random programmers, people, game developers, whatever. If you would look at this picture for, let's say, 30 seconds, do you see anyone familiar between there? Do you recognize anyone? Cactus. OK, that's one, Cactus. All right. What else? If Miyamoto would be here, would you have seen him? Would you have noticed him if Miyamoto was standing here and you were looking at this page for so long? Yes? Raise your hand. Would you have noticed him? All right. I would have. So, it took me three GECs, and I don't know how many interviews to actually get to know the indies. And now I can actually spot them. You know, this is, 
This is Martin. He did uh, Jesus vs. Dinosaurs and Andreas, Spirits. Back there is Phil Fish. Hi, Phil. Um, Dan, he made uh, Cortex Command. Here's the guy from Blueberry Garden, Eric, and of course, Cactus. Act like you're already successful. I mean, you're making this awesome game. You should use that energy to, to become confident about yourself, because you're making something beautiful that other people deserve to see. But, you know, you can already help others while you're making this game. Um, you can support them, you can retweet their messages, you can share their links with others on Facebook. You can really, really, really help other people out to get the attention they deserve. Because they will become your biggest champions and supporters when you will need them. So in order to get people to pay attention to you, pay attention to them first. Support them. And not just because you want their support afterwards. Because they will know, they will, they will smell that. I support people because I believe in them, because I want them to succeed. Use your voice in such a way. Visit other studios. Just mail them and call them. Walk into Massive Entertainment in Melbourne and say, hey, I just wanted to see what you guys are up to and, you know, what's up? I, I was in Melbourne a week ago. I could have easily done that if my schedule would have allowed it. You know, play other games. Play a lot of other games and just give your feedback. Don't just play it and think, crap, you made a much better game than me. Tell them what you like. Learn from it as well. You know, help other people out when they ask you for advice. Help other people out when you see they're in trouble. Don't ignore it. Make fan art and tributes. I mean, they are such a motivational injection for the people you, you, you give them to. You don't want to imagine. Have, who has gotten fan art for one of their games from someone else? And what was the response? What, 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 what did you feel? Did you like it? Well, of course, I have a controversial feeling about the other fan art picture that I saw. But <laughs> okay, sometimes you do get fan art that you don't like, but then again, it's a sign. It's a sign of support. It's a sign of well-intentioned support. You know, interact with others. Give people credit. Give tools credit. Give tools a lot of credit, because they will be your champions. If you make an awesome three D game in Unity, and it, you know, suddenly Unity sees it, they will use it as a flagship title for why people should use Unity. That's going to give you a lot of eyeballs, let's be honest. But guys, um, of course I'm standing here telling you all this stuff, but I want to make sure that you guys understand that I, I see what you guys are going through. You know, especially in front, of, in front of me are standing students. I mean, you guys have deadlines, you guys have assignments, you guys are constantly dealing with stress and pressure <coughs> from multiple sides. But I still believe that if you really want your game to be played, you need to reach out to other people. So Andy Schatz might be right. You might be able to make this great game. But you know what the most painful thing is? It's to know that your game might have reached one million people, but it never did. That's painful. That's really painful. Bleep that out. So focus on getting things done. You know, you. I know you just want to make the game and, and, and not do the marketing, but you're doing marketing from day one. You're choosing a certain art style. You're choosing a certain genre based on something that you think other people might like, that you might like. You might be your customer, and your game will be made for people like you. It's a niche market, but then again, you're doing your marketing subconsciously already. Tough luck, pal. It's part of the job. It's part of your thinking. Um, marketing starts from day one, as I said. And even if you are still too lazy, I mean, there's always options around. I mean, you can find a friend who might be interested and love your game and is your biggest champion. Why don't you ask them to do it? Involve them, though. Be prepared to let go of your project. Give them freedom to actually act upon it. Don't become some benevolent dictator that has to approve everything they do. Write a document that states what their framework of actions is and what they should or should not do to represent your game. But don't look and micromanage, because you will get them down and you will take away more time from, from your game development, giving him attention or her attention, than actually finishing your game and letting them do their jobs. And do ask other people for advice. I mean, everyone loves giving their opinion, even if you don't want to hear it. You know, man up or woman up, I guess. Um, be open for feedback and criticism. It might hurt. It might really, really hurt. But it will make you think. 
and it will make you reflect on your decisions. And in a worst case scenario, I mean, you can always read a book about it. I mean, I have, and um, it actually really helped because it puts things into perspective. Um, you know, loose ends, things that you think you still have to do, eat up much more energy than putting them away in a cabinet and waiting a couple of months until you actually do them. So, you know, don't think about everything you need to do all at once. Make a list, you know, cut off the, the bottom three quarters of the list that you're not going to get to in any weeks and put that away. Think about it once. Think about every single thing. When, when, when you have an idea for a marketing thing or a PR thing or some cool thing to get attention, write it down, move it away so it doesn't distract you from development. But don't leave it there. Don't dump it and leave it there. Make sure you do pick it up once you notice people are interested in your game and it might be a viable product to sell. So in summary, I'm saying here blog. I mean much more than that. You know, don't just um, transmit. You know, everyone can transmit, interact, you know, be social. Um, do your research. I mean, I, I've, I've read a lot of articles and that's why I'm encouraging you guys to blog about your experiences because it's people who blogged, people who, who wrote about their challenges that I have gotten this knowledge from. They have shared their insights, blood, sweat and tears through their stories and I read them and it empowered me and it made me wiser and it made me make sure that I did not make the same mistakes and reinvent the wheel. Because let's be honest guys, we've all reinvented the wheel at least once in our lifetimes. We thought we could do it without any prior research. And we ended up finding out that it might have been even easier had we just read a couple of pages. Google alerts. Like I said, make yourself findable, and then once you are getting attention, make sure you measure it and follow it. It's not only a great source of motivation and energy, but also very important to measure your success and the amount of effort you should put into a project. If you find out a project is not going to sell more than 10,000 copies, you should not put more than a year into it, because after that, it's, it's, not, it's not worth it anymore. Um, be friendly to others. Be friendly to fellow developers. Look them out. Talk about your game. You have the excellent, you have an excellent excuse to talk to whoever you want in this game industry because you're actually doing something they are doing too. You are confronted with the same challenges, stress, problems, and things you can relate to. So if you want to walk up to Miyamoto, you don't ask him for an autograph, you ask him for how, what kind of biggest challenge he had. What was his biggest fear in making Mario? And he might even open up to you if PR people don't like aim for your head. Uh, because it might be an answer they don't want you to, to hear. Um, and you know, you are doing a continuous marketing effort even if you don't know it. But if you do put a little extra effort into it, you might see a lot of fruit from it. You might see some sales. Download this book. It's a book that actually got me started in, in game marketing and PR by actually one of my early mentors, uh, Scott Steinberg. Uh, I actually have the pleasure of reading his book. It's online, it's free. Uh, the link's in the, the references, so you don't have to write, it, write the name down. Um, it's four years old, but it's about the traditional way of PR and marketing, the traditional way publishers are doing it. Understand your enemy, understand your bigger competitor, and read it. And here are here's the references. That's why I gave you guys uh, you know, handouts, so you don't have to write this down. But I do encourage you to read all of this. This has been a, a, a lot of information that has helped me. And you know I can only cram as much as I want to in one hour. But I'm sure that if you guys uh, have a look at these, you will find a lot of valuable information. I maybe skim through or uh, might help you personally on your own problems. Thanks a lot for your time.